Why hello there! Yes, I know, it's been a very long time since I've posted a video. Uh, I've had a very crazy past month and a half. But, the good news is, is that I'm back. And, with that, I decided, why not have a couple video shoots real quick in between episodes of Dude You Haven't Played This Game. So, without further ado, this is my top five favorite franchises in video games. So what I wanted to do is put together a list of the top five franchises that I get the most excited about when new games come out, and really just that I'm the biggest fan of. And so, I've compiled the list, and I've picked a couple games from my collection. Not that these are my favorite games, some are, some are not, but just a couple games just to prove as a representation of the franchises that I hold near and dear. Now, in order to be considered part of a franchise or, you know, just a series of games, uh, the only requirement, in my opinion, is that you need at least three games in the series. Three. To me, that's considered a series. Even if something hasn't come out in a very long time, let's say, for example, um, oh, I don't know, Pocky and Rocky, for example. So that's still a game that released with three games. Uh, two on the Super Nintendo, one on Game Boy Advance. So that would still technically be considered a series. So, if that's one of your series, there you go. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with number five. Number five is the Legend of Zelda series. Uh, I love the Zelda series. Uh, it was one of the first games that I had ever played. And uh, not this one, obviously, because this is Zelda 2. But the very first Zelda game that I had ever played was uh, the very first Zelda. And I got it with a Nintendo, loved the game, I thought it was great. I actually ne didn't play the second one for years. Uh, and then I immediately jumped to the third one and completely fell in love with the series. Number four on my list is the Super Mario series. So I've kind of honestly been bored with the Super Mario series as of late. Um, they always release good games. The games are, are for the most part, pretty good. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of cut and paste. There's a lot of just same old, same old. Um, but the game design and ideas that they present are usually pretty fresh, and I usually still pretty get pretty excited over new uh, Mario titles. So, despite the fact that there's just such a flood of Mario titles right now. Um, it, it's still a great series and it's one of my all-time favorites. Super Mario Brothers was the first game I ever played and I absolutely loved it. Um, this happens to be my favorite Mario game, Super Mario World, and I, I just love everything about this game. And uh, I love some of the newer titles too. Um, the uh, Mario Galaxy games are fun. Um, I really like, uh, I didn't really like Super Mario Sunshine that much, but I, I did enjoy Mario 2, Mario 3, um, so, for what it is, Mario World, uh, is my favorite. But yeah, Super, Super Mario Brothers is a great series, stands the test of time, um, awesome, awesome series. Alright, these next three are pretty tough to pick from, but I'm gonna go with, uh, Mega Man as number three. I love the Mega Man series. Uh, everything about it. They have eight robot masters collecting all the parts. And you could even stand to say that for Mega Man, I mean, the Mega Man X series, I would also say that I like that. But the classic Mega Man series is the one that I've always absolutely adored. Uh, it was Mega Man 3 is my favorite game of all time. So it was really hard to not just immediately throw the Mega Man games on the very top for the franchises. But since production is slowed on Mega Man games, and just Capcom isn't really using them other than things in like, you know, trading cards and comic books and everything, and of course in the upcoming Smash Brothers game, Mega Man hasn't seen too much love in terms of an actual game release lately. So it's, it's just kind of sad because we want to all see classic Mega Man come back. Uh, even if it's not in 8-bit form, even if it's like in, uh, in a newer graphical overhaul um, to continue what, where they left off with Mega Man 8. Um, I loved Mega Man 9. Mega Man 10, eh, and, you know, take it or leave it, but Mega Man 9 was a, was a great return to the series, and I was super excited when the game came out. 
Uh, would I like these games in physical releases? Yeah, kinda. It'd be nice if uh, Capcom actually threw together, let's say for example for the release of Mega Man 11, uh, if they do of Mega Man 11. If they throw Mega Man 9, 10, and 11 all on one disc and slap a $30 price tag on it, I'd definitely buy that. So, hey, that'd be awesome. And hopefully we'll be able to see something like that come out in the future. But if not, doesn't matter because Mega Man 3 and just Mega Man in general, my number three favorite franchise. Metroid. Number two on my list. This was really hard for me to pick between number two and number one, because I love these series so much. And for Metroid, uh, it was a series where there was just a, a it, was, it was interesting to play the first Metroid for the very first time. Uh, it was a very ambient and atmospheric game, and I hadn't felt that at that time, even with Zelda and Mario, because the three games that I got when I was a kid were Mario, which came with the system, Zelda, and Metroid. And so, playing through Zelda, and Mario didn't feel the same as playing through Metroid, and nor should it. But what Metroid brought to the table was just atmosphere and ambience and just total immersion in a world where you could get completely lost. And of, of course, it's the first Metroid game, so I mean, have you seen that map? Uh, you can't get through this game without Nintendo Power or a complete memorization of the actual map itself. So. With that said, uh, Metroid is, is, is a good series. Um, I wish that, and I hope that they come out with something for the Wii U um, in the future. I think they really need to continue the series. Um, for the rest of the games in the franchise, I, I uh, again feel the same way about each and every one of them. I love the Metroid Prime series. I still haven't finished the third one. Uh, the second one to me was really just, it dragged. It was a good game, but it was was it, like I would fall asleep playing that game. Uh, it just dragged at points. I have no idea why, but uh, and then of course the first Metroid Prime uh, is still one of my favorite uh, games of all time, uh, in the, especially in the series. Uh, I loved Super Metroid, even though I really wanted to play it when I was a kid, and I, I didn't have the opportunity to do it until years later. Um, I'd only played it on like the, when you go to the when you went to Toys R Us, and you could play it on like Super Nintendo when they had it on display. So. Um, and as far as uh, Metroid 2, I played Metroid 2, Return of Samus, or Samus. Watch the Kool-Aid commercial for what, for, yeah, you know what, I'll just, uh, um, what else? You know, a lot of people give Other M a lot of slack. I actually embrace the fact that they tried to give Metroid more of a story. Um, is, if it's a good or bad story, eh, that that's to be said. That's a more of an opinion. Um, but it was it was interesting that all the work and development that they put into that franchise and into that series, uh, specifically for Metroid Other M, uh, was they wanted to really enhance and push the the story. And I think I, I kind of commend Nintendo on that, especially Nintendo, a company that even though they they had a third party team ninja. And Tecmo uh, make the game, uh, but they were in control of the story and shaping the story as as far as um, uh, as far as approving it and, and writing it off. I believe Sakamoto, who is the uh, uh, he's the uh, developer, or the the you know main person in the franchise who works on Metroid games, uh, wrote off on the story, good or bad. It's kind of embracing to see Nintendo release a game that has a fully functional story with voice acting and everything. So. Uh, I think it's a step in the right direction for the series. I just think the story needs to be better, and they need to... They, they really need to take out the stuff that just doesn't work. So, am I excited about the next Metroid game? Yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. So, that's it. Number two is Metroid. And number one. Most excited franchise. Best franchise of all time. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Castlevania. I love the Castlevania series. It is by far one of my favorite series. Now, I'm not crazy at all about the newer games. I'm not even including the newer games. Uh, and when I talk about newer games, I'm talking about the Lords of Shadow series, just to kind of asterisk. Uh, 
all the original games, the the Iga storyline, the uh, Koji Igarashi storyline, the timeline, um, even the games that aren't in his timeline, such as the Castlevania 64, like that type of stuff. Um, I think Circle of the Moon is not in that either. Um, but I I love the Castlevania series. Um, I think it is. Uh, one of the most well done series, has some of the best music uh, of all time in any video game franchise history. In fact, it's, it's well known that Castlevania has incredible music. Um, so, Castlevania 2 is one of my favorites. Uh, I love Castlevania 2, um, even though it gets a lot of hate from a lot of people. Um, Castlevania 1 is a fantastic title as well, Castlevania 3. Super Castlevania 4 is one of my favorites as well. And then, you know, some of the later games that I hadn't played until I was uh, much older, um, such as uh, Rondo of Blood, uh, Bloodlines, because I didn't know a Genesis when I was a kid, so... Um, I, but uh, I love those titles, too. For the newer games, um, I've, I've been following the series ever since, you know, it came out. Uh, Castlevania 2 was the first one that I had played, and I really loved the exploration, the music, and again, the ambience and atmosphere that you get when you play Castlevania 2. It just feels unlike any other title uh, out there. And for the other games uh, in the series, a lot of them echo that. A lot of them have a feeling of just one man or woman, in the case of you know certain games, just alone fighting for, you know, to, to, to save the world from, from Dracula or, you know, evil forces, whatever, you know, whatever the plot is of the game, usually it's Dracula, but um, I also love the whole horror and gothic atmosphere of the game. Uh, it's, it's just a lot of fun, and it's one of those titles, especially during Halloween time and in the fall, I always break these games out and I just fall in love with them all over again. Um, I can't say that about a lot of titles. I, I do go back and forth about a lot of uh, franchises, and you guys may be similar, where, you know, one month it's, oh my god, I'm really addicted with uh, the Mario games, and then the next will be, oh, I really love the Ninja Gaiden titles, and maybe the next will be, oh, I love the Castlevania series. So, but Castlevania for me, at least once a year, at least during the fall time, I get super, super excited about it, and I start playing all the games all over again. So that's my list. That's my top five. I want to hear from you though. What are your top five franchises for video games? Again, the ground rules are you just have to have three games in the in the franchise. And I want to know what you guys think about your franchises. Feel free to leave me comments or video responses and let's get a discussion going. Again, uh, you will be seeing more videos soon. And apologize about the delay. I am currently in the editing process of the new Dude You Haven't Played This Game episode. So I look forward to showing everybody it. I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, again, take care and let's see those games.